Hi, I'm Tim Williams. I'm the lead trial attorney here at the firm. In this video segment, I'd like to talk about compression fractures of the spine. You know, it's not unusual in our firm to handle cases where people have suffered compression fractures in their spine. Generally speaking, it's a lower spine or the lumbar spine that's involved, and more often than not, it's someone who has either osteopenia or osteoporosis. Either condition just means there's a loss of bone density. So to understand what it means to have a compression fracture of the spine, let's turn to the model. Here we have an anatomical model of the spine. The head would be up here. Here's a tailbone down here. You have the neck, the mid-back, and the low back. And again, most of the fractures we see are, are involving the low back, primarily because they're bigger bone structures, and also you have all the weight of all the levels above sitting on those structures, so there's additional weight that's, that's applied to them as compared to, say, the neck, where it's just holding the head up. So if we, if we focus in then on the lumbar spine, you can see there's these nice, thick, uh, uh, pieces of bone. Uh, these are called vertebral bodies. Between each bone, if you want to add some layers, you're going to see there's the nerves and then here's some discs. So that's what it looks like all put together uh, just in terms of the deep structure. You have the discs in between the bones and the discs are supposed to um, act as shock absorbers. And so that way it's not bone on bone and, and uh, uh, there's not a lot of jarring going on. However, when the bones become less dense, it becomes an issue, particularly where sudden force is applied. So what we'll do is we are going to um, look at this video here, and uh, let's do the let's stick with the low back since that's what we see the most uh, most often. So again, here's your lumbar spine. There's the disc we've added to it. Here's your um, your hips down here, and if you if you look inside now, this is going to this is going to illustrate what happens when someone has osteopenia or osteoporosis. Again, a loss of bone density because that's more often than not, that's where we see the fractures occurring. So a person here has this lattice work of bone. Uh, it becomes less dense, uh, usually as we age. And then you can have some site fracturing in there. Those are, those are called osteoporotic compression fractures. And that's generally when the bone is dent less dense, as we saw, and then sudden force is applied. So someone falls down a set of bad stairs, or they're here from behind in a car. Uh, you have the sudden force applied to that vert vertebral body. And then because the lattice work is so much weaker than a person who's younger with healthy bones, uh, it's, it's prone to cracking. That's, that's what we call a compression fracture. And from the outset, so that's what it looks like on the microscopic level. If we, if we back up quite a bit, here we can see this person is, is standing up straight. And then suddenly they have force applied uh, from the back. So let's say they're hit from behind. It's adding uh, pressure to the front side of this, these vertebral bodies, but because the bone lattice is so much weaker with someone who, with osteoporosis or osteopenia, it crushes that. So if you think of a styrofoam packaging, like a peanut packaging, and you crush that, that's, a, that's a sim, sim, similar to what happens here at the bone, except unlike styrofoam packaging, the bone doesn't bounce back into shape. It's, once it's crushed, it's crushed for good. It doesn't do anything um, to bounce back. You can't really get it, get, get, get it to expand again because you crush those, that, that lattice work and there's nothing there to, to, to force that back out. There's really no rebound um, to that. So then you have uh, then a permanently altered um, uh, vertebral body. You can see now there's space down below. That's gonna, what's, that's, what that's going to do is going to pull up on that outer, outer layer of disc. It's going to create pain. It's going to create greater um, likelihood of disc damage down the line, um, including just simple uh, everyday activities, such as bending over to pick up your dog, um, bending over to pick up the paper. If you have this going on, it's more likely to then herniate uh, that disc at that level. So there's a lot of nasty stuff that can, that can result, not just from the fracture itself, but from uh, what can happen afterwards. So that's essentially it. Now the, the treatment uh, options are still evolving uh, as time goes on. Uh, right now, the best treatment op option we've seen, apart from leaving it alone and hoping the pain goes, goes away, is that um, if the bones are weak enough, the doctors can sometimes go in there and inject, for lack of better words, glue uh, or cement that actually uh, is injected into the bone itself. It solidifies and gives that bone a rigid structure so it's not going to compress and fracture even more than it already has. So that is the long and short of, uh, of compression fractures. Again, more often than not, we see these in uh, elder, elder, elderly uh, clients or people with congenital osteopenia or osteoporosis. Um, and uh, it, it's no joy, but thankfully, um, in most cases, it's, it's not terribly life-altering. It can be. Uh, but for the most part, non-surgical intervention is, is the key. 
If you've been injured and need help, Dwyer Williams Trucos attorneys will get you the settlement you deserve. Experience gets results. 